in the right maxilla, recessions are present around incisors from central incisor to second premolar. At least 3 mm of keratinized tissue are surrounding the recession around the incisors and premolars. A little amount of keratinized gingiva is present around the canine. The sequence of recessions will be treated with a coronally advanced flap, grafting the canine with some connective tissue. First, connective tissue is harvested from the premolar area of the palate. A linear incision with a blade is performed, then with a periosteal elevator, all the soft tissue is detached from the bone. Then, with a 15 blade, the internal layer of connective tissue is cut and the graft is harvested. A collagen sheet is inserted in the area, then a continuous PTFE suture is performed to close the surgical wound. By tying the knot, a perfect hemostasis is obtained. Then the root preparation is carried out, first with a scaler, removing the superficial layer of each exposed root, Then, with a diamond burr on a slow speed handpiece, the preparation is completed. The center of rotation is identified 
on the canine. Then with the 15C blade, two converging incisions are performed starting from the zenith of the gingiva of the adjacent teeth to a point along the gingival margin at a distance from the top of the papilla one millimeter more than the amount of the gingival recession. A series of incision converging to the center of rotation are carried out mesial and distal to the center of rotation itself with the same direction from the zenith of the gingiva of each tooth adjacent to the respective recession. All incisions mesial to the center of rotation will be converging to the center of rotation itself the same as all the incisions distal to the center of rotation. With the blade, a bevel incision is made underneath the papilla, joining the bone. Then, with the elevator, a full thickness elevation is carried out going a couple of millimeters beyond the mucogingival junction. Then again with the 15C blade, a split thickness dissection is made, keeping the blade parallel to the surface of the flap in the most superficial portion of the flap itself, thus allowing from passive mobility in a coronal direction. Again with the blade, the deepithelialization is done on the papilla. Specific scissors will be used to remove all the epithelial remnants, especially on top of the papilla. And by means of this maneuver, a connective tissue layer is exposed to be faced at the end of the surgery with the internal portion of the flap. The graft is sutured by means of a continuous sutures anchored to the papilla. A resorbable suture is used. A perfect adaptation of the graft is obtained.
Then with PTFE 5 sutures, the flap is coronally advanced. Again, continuous sutures, sling sutures anchored to the papilla will displace the flap coronally. From the external to the internal portion of the surgical papilla of the flap, then from buccal to palatal of the anatomical papilla, the epithelialized one, then underneath the contact point, and again back to the initial point, from the surface to the depth of the surgical papilla, from buccal to palatal the, of the anatomical one, then back again underneath the contact point and tying the knot on the buccal aspect. Simple interrupted sutures will be used to close at best the top of the papilla. Resorbable sutures are used in this case. At the end of the surgery, all the cemento enamel junctions are fully covered. At two weeks at sutures removal, an optimal soft tissue healing can be seen, the same on the palatal aspect, and at six months, a nice root coverage is shown in comparison with the initial condition.